guys, I wanted to take a minute while I'm driving, don't worry, safely driving, um, to give a little bit of a recount of my experience with the Cruise Planners franchise. Don't mind <laughs> the laundry in the back. Um, a little bit of a laundry service for a uh, vacation rental business. So she's packed. But um, I did uh, buy a Cruise Planners franchise in 2014. Um, and my experience was so just to give you some background and context the reason that I bought the franchise was because I had vacation rentals and um, my vacation rental business was growing my personal rentals uh, timeshares that I was wholesaling um, and renting out um, and then you know I had like a captive audience so I was taking in creating like activity package bundles. I was basically just approaching different companies in the area and telling them what I did and that I owned and managed and uh, sold units and that I had a captive audience and I'd put their brochures or activity packages in front of them um, if we could work out some type of mutually beneficial situation to where I was being compensated for that. And I did that for a few years. And it got to a point where social media kind of blew up. Well, I mean, it had been blowing up, but it got to the point where influencers and affiliate programs were starting to kind of take over. And those companies no longer wanted to like really work with me on kind of a, a small scale individual basis like that. And not only that, but I was like, um, basically, I just felt like there was a more efficient, effective way of doing things on my side as well, and a more scalable approach. And so that's when I started thinking about cruise planners. I thought, okay, this would be a great synergy with my business. You know, even if I don't sell cruises, they have travel benefits in general. And I thought it would be a great marriage and a great extension from what I was currently running at the time so I thought it would just be an easy way to branch off I thought it would provide some additional income I wasn't looking at it as like a full-time income I was just kind of looking at it as um, another stream of revenue another kind of side hustle or pretty much just like an upsell to my already captive audience I already had email lists I already had newsletters I always already had all that going on so I thought it would be an easy way to uh, take advantage of that and to upsell and make a little extra commission on top of that. Um, and then also part of it was, uh, at the time I was not spending much time or energy or resources in email marketing. And the cruise planner model looked like a good way to try to use their marketing funnels and marketing tools to kind of um, tie into so they could kind of help me with some of that marketing and in my experience uh, <laughs> cruise planners I don't think it was the best avenue for me it was not the best fit for me um, not to say that it may not be a good fit for someone out there. Of course, there are people out there with cruise plan planner franchises that are doing well. It's just the reality, right? It's a good fit for some people. It's not a good fit for other people. Um, I personally got out of it because there were just better ways, right? So cruise planners, of course, is known as cruise planners. There's a little bit of a branding problem for me on that side because even though I did get into selling cruises and I definitely pushed to sell cruises because the brand name is Cruise Planners so people are like oh it's Cruise Planners franchise even though I kind of you know try to put my own spin on it and put my own company name and website they still get to the landing page and it's still Cruise Planners branded 
and people are like, wait, is it just cruises? And then you have to explain and it's just too much. It's, it, it's confusing and complicated and people have the attention span of like a goldfish nowadays. They're just not into that. There's easier ways. So they're, they're not going to go through that with you. They just don't have the patience or uh, want to spend any time reading or understanding. So the branding issue was a little difficult for me since going into it, I knew cruises weren't going to be my main focus. I knew it was going to be more so like the activity side of things um, and the lodging side of things, maybe a little bit of cruise stuff, uh, but not really. <laughs> that was more so forced just because it made sense once I bought it. But I have to say that Cruise Planner does have some um, positives and that's if you haven't started a business before, you haven't owned a business before, it is like a business in a box and that's definitely what they push when they're trying to sell you on it. And you know, that is true. There are some things that um, you can get up and running a little bit faster. You can get a little bit more hand holding and assistance. Uh, if you need that in starting a business. Now, if you're somebody who is an entrepreneur, <laughs> most entrepreneurs don't like hand holding. The reason they're entrepreneurs is because they like to do things on their own, their own way, in their own time. They like the freedom. They like the creativity. They like the ownership. They like all of that. So I don't think cruise planners is, is like good for kind of the stereotypical uh, in general terms entrepreneur. I think it's more so good for the salesperson, the commission salesperson. So the same person that may be good at like real estate, the same person that may be good at um, any type of sales really you know somebody that just has that salesy personality you want to go and shake hands and go to networking events and you want to do all that and you want to make sales and you want to get a commission on it it's probably good for you if you're somebody that doesn't really want to like start a business but you want the perks of a business it will probably work for you but just the more so uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneur I don't think it's as good of a fit, and I think that's why it wasn't a great fit for me. Um, I'm, I don't want hand-holding. I don't want to have to call into your customer support team all the time. I don't want to have to talk to your reps. I don't want to have to touch base. I don't want to have to talk about metrics. I don't want to have to talk about sales goals. I don't want to do any of that. I don't. <laughs> just being honest. Know thyself, right? Um, I just basically wanted to use some of their tools and resources to make my existing business uh, better at kind of capturing my audience and getting some upsells and additional sales and additional income. And that just, it didn't, it didn't work in very well. Like I, the tools that I thought I was kind of pimping them out for, um, the tools they offered, offered weren't that great. I found better tools elsewhere. There's better email marketing tools. There's way better websites. The thing is that their websites are so static and so templated that you can't customize, you can't edit them. They, it really kind of forces you to be, it seems like the people that do the best with cruise planners are definitely cruise selling cruises. So if you're getting into it to be like a full well-rounded travel agency or travel planner or travel concierge, or whatever you want to call it, it probably won't be the best fit for you. Now, if you wanna sell the crap out of cruises, you wanna do group cruises, you wanna do cruise activities, cruise groups, cruise, you know, uh, different themed cruises, if you wanna do that, sign on, my friend. It, it will probably be a great fit for you, but uh, somebody who wants to be more of like whatever niche they want to meet in the travel industry, it's not, is good of a fit and ultimately I just kind of felt like my values weren't aligned with theirs that's really the true reason why I got out um, I, I, I just got the sense of they want to sell you the franchise so 
therein lies a franchise fee. They want to charge you royalties. Therein lies more income for them. And they want to charge a mandatory tech fee. This was at the time, the structure may change, but this is what it was at the time. And they kind of nickel and dime you, and it definitely is a sales model and a, um, a structure that's set up for them to make money, which I understand, of course, right? They're in it for money. We're all, we're, I get it, right? If I were to start a franchise, I, I get it. Like, I understand. But from my side of things, I just didn't feel like they were offering uh, a fair amount of value for what they were charging. I didn't feel like the franchise fee um, was in line with what they actually offered out of the gate. Because to me, the franchise fee is for what you get out of the gate, which is basically the brand. And the brand was not strong enough and did not bring enough just initial push and sales for me to really justify that franchise fee. <clears throat> Now royalty, that's whatever, it is what it is. It's just a percentage, so it's kind of in line with whatever you put into it. But the tech fee, I also didn't think was fair because I didn't think it was, again, in line with what they were offering. The website was awful. I mean, you can find people that build websites for next to nothing now. Not only that, but they'll offer SEO, they'll offer backlinks, they'll offer you know, all site, all types of things to opti optimize your website. And cruise planners didn't do that at the time. They just offered a template website that really, you can get a template website for free off of Weebly. I mean, what, what are you offering? I mean, hosting, you can get hosting for 40 bucks a year from a, a company, you know, a domain. You can get a domain for $12.99 from GoDaddy. I mean, at the time, I think they were charging $59 a month. And I'm like, well, what are you providing? Because the website's awful. The website is actually detracting, not adding to my business. So <coughs> I, didn't, I didn't feel like the tech fee was at all worth it. Um, and then, you know, you communicate that. And <laughs> there's nothing that they do. I mean, it's, it's a very... Uh, the franchise structure is pretty rigid. So if you're somebody that's creative and has a lot of out-of-the-box out ideas, which a lot of entrepreneurs do, um, it's going to be a little challenging for you. And not only that, but their lack of like being able to work with you and adjust to your needs... Um, is a pretty big, pretty big uh, con to me. And the, the place where I really lost uh, interest <laughs> and I felt really disconnected in terms of shared values was um, my grandfather passed away, one of the closest people to me in my life. And we had a very special bond and relationship. And when he passed away, I contacted cruise planners and I told them what happened and I said you know what I'm gonna take some time away from the business they knew all along that it wasn't my main business um, I said I'm gonna take some time away can you just freeze my website or delete my what or do whatever um, because I'm not gonna be sending traffic to it I'm not gonna be pushing it I'm not gonna be doing anything on the back end in terms of fulfilling bookings or anything like that or responding. So I asked them if they could just freeze it and in effect also freeze the tech fee. And they said, we can freeze your franchise, but we cannot freeze the website or tech fee. And I was like, okay, so you're gonna freeze. <laughs> everything but you're still like really you're gonna nickel and dime me like that for the website fee like it's not costing you it's not costing you I understand like the hosting side of it the domain side of it is not costing you $59 per month you're pocketing that money it's just like straight up revenue for them 
So I thought that was really, I thought that was awful. I really did because I was pretty upfront and honest with them and I asked them and I thought it was a very reasonable ask. And, um, you know, I wasn't asking them to just freeze the tech fee and leave my website up or do anything like that. I said, you can take it down. You can freeze it, stop it, take it down, delete it, do whatever you need to do. And I'll pay whatever to get it back up. Um, you know, I'll pay for a new domain, <laughs> whatever. And they were not willing to do that. And uh, I thought it was a very reasonable ask. And I thought it was a very unreasonable answer of theirs. And I felt like they were nickel and diming me. And I felt like they were just squeezing money out of me. Because they probably thought I was going to leave the franchise anyways at that point. So I'm sure they were like, let's just get a few last bucks before she leaves. Uh, <laughs> that's just the sense that I got. And it just felt kind of gross and icky. And I just... I felt like it was really bad business. Um, and just overall, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I fully acknowledge that it was not a good fit for me. So that's, that's my side. That's my responsibility, you know, and sometimes you don't know until you jump in and you just trial and error it and you see if it works. Uh, that's just part of business. That's just part of being an entrepreneur. Um, but I also just did not think that it was worth it. I don't feel like they provided the value. I feel like you can go and partner with travel companies that are out there and become part of their, uh, join their affiliate programs like Expedia Affiliate or other travel company affiliates and book travel and do the same thing without a franchise like Cruise Planners. Um, like, like I said, the website, the tech fee was just like so not worth it. The website's awful. Uh, the back end was pretty outdated. Uh, the email marketing system they use was outdated. There's better email marketing systems that you can get out there for pretty reasonable per month fee. Uh, there's cheap web hosting, cheap domain names that you can get for less and you can build a better website and you can optimize better uh, for marketing purposes. Uh, the customer relationship uh, management tool I thought would be another good tool that I would get as part of the franchise. Um, once again, there's was it was there, but it was not great. I felt like what they were doing was trying to get you to input customer data and customer emails for them to benefit. Like when you leave the franchise, they're still gonna keep those emails. They're still gonna send their emails. They're still gonna do their own marketing. Cause the thing is, is that they still sold travel apart from their franchisees. So um, from my understanding, from what I saw at the time, so they still have their main website. They they sell franchises, they, fell, <laughs> they sell travel. Um, so I was like, nah. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to build this customer base and give them all my customer data that they may be using and selling and repurposing and even having like a conflict of interest relationship and selling stuff to them. I don't know. It just felt like that. And I didn't think that was appropriate. Um, I even got a reduced franchise fee because they had different tiers to their franchise and one of them where you could get a discount in the franchise fee was if you were somebody who has previous experience in the travel industry and like I said I had a business where I was doing vacation rentals and so I got a <laughs> significantly reduced franchise fee I want to say it was about one-fifth approximately of the full franchise fee and I still didn't even think that the discounted franchise fee was worth it so that probably says a lot for somebody if you're considering paying the full franchise fee um, like I said I just don't think the branding is that strong and that's kind of what you're paying for right when you pay that franchise fee I consider that to be I mean you're paying for some of the business in box in the box efficiencies and ease of starting a business and helping starting a business but to me one of the because you can easily get that from wherever where what you can't get is the branding so to me that's the biggest thing that you're paying for and I didn't find the branding to be that strong I actually found it to be confusing especially if you're not selling just cruises like that's all you sell that's what you sell that's your predominant yeah 
<laughs> predominant sales channel and it's just a really antiquated business model too like and it's hard to know that up front because I didn't really learn that part until I went to the training, which you have to pay for. <laughs> and uh, well, you have to pay to get to. I don't know if we paid for the actual training. If we did, it wasn't very much. But we had to pay for travel to get out there, which I think was the more expensive part of it. And um, at the training, you learn <laughs> their actual system for like making travel arrangements and booking travel. And there was like a lot of like old school, not to sound like, I, I hate to sound like a millennial or anything, but um, there was a lot of like old school, like you gotta pick up the phone and you gotta call this company and then you gotta book it with them. And then you gotta call, pick up the phone and call the client. I'm like, I'm buying an online business. Like I'm buying, this is the online business. Like I'm buying the website, I'm paying this tech fee. This is an online business, but I'm doing all this back end work of picking up the phone. So I'm like, yeah, my whole hope of scalability is just killed right then and there. If I'm having to pick the phone every single time I'm making a booking, there's no efficiency, there's no scalability. I'm just trading time for money. And that wasn't really my whole purpose in getting behind it. So I was like, well, that kills that right there. <laughs> I can book travel more efficiently, like I said, through Expedia Affiliate or through Airbnb for people or through other providers and discount discounting companies and wholesalers just cut out the middleman or cruise planners and do it your own build your own brand build your own social media page and that's the thing is like their social media was not great their uh like i said their back-end tools <clears throat> weren't great their training wasn't great it was like these webinars that reminded me of like 1990s training i was like there's so many more tools and resources and everything available. In all honesty, my personal advice now, like I said, this is not a one size fits all, but my personal advice would be to spend whatever money you were thinking about spending on a cruise planner's franchise and go out there and buy an online SEO training program or buy um, online marketing or email marketing uh, training programs or buy affiliate marketing programs and learn about those and then execute them execute them in your own time with your own branding with your own strategy with your own, if you're an entrepreneur if you're that person that wants to do it do it your own way have the freedom have the flexibility make it as old school as you want make it as new school as you want make it as whatever it is you want um, that will provide a better avenue to do that than through cruise planners, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. It wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. I remember I kind of had a red flag when I started um, because I can't remember if I asked for it or if they provided it, but there was like a list of, uh, as I was going through, I think through the franchise agreement, um, there was part of that where you could see cruise planners franchises new franchises and their name and state and all that data and then you could also see franchises that were like expiring or going away and i remember the list of franchises that were expiring and it was lengthy and i was sitting here thinking oh my gosh that looks like quite the turnover rate you know like I can see the list of who's coming on which is lengthy too but the list of them going is alarmingly lengthy <laughs> and I just had like this intuitive hit of like ooh, I don't know this kind of looks like one of those like people get in they spend the money pay the franchise fee pay the monthly tech fee give it a good run for a year or two they get sick of paying the tech fee if they're not making much money they don't really care about the royalties because they're not making much money and they don't get much outreach from the home office and when they do it's like really old school 1990s training that's just targeted to the bulk audience rather than like individualized and really all that helpful it's kind of just like cliche stuff so 
yeah, that's <laughs> that's my honest opinion of <laughs> how I felt about it. And you know, and I think that part of it is that it's in the tech world and it's in the travel industry and those are both two industries that are highly highly evolved and evolving quickly right now they're being affected by the times legislation technology everything and people's booking habits and everything are changing so fast you know you have the invent of like Airbnb and all those different apps where you can just book on your phone while you're literally driving to your vacation destination so people aren't booking as far out. They're not putting as much foresight and planning into their vacations. They need more technology. They want more technology. They want last minute booking. They want it online. They don't want to have to call up and sit on the phone with a travel agent. You know, that's, that's old school. <laughs> but there's still, there's still opportunities to make money in there. Um, like I said, Airbnb has worked well for me. Travel, uh, Expedia's travel agent affiliate programs worked great for me. Um, wholesaling has worked great for me. Renting out other people's properties as a property manager has worked great for me. So there are different ways to do it. I just don't know if Cruise Planners is really the best for 2020 in general. Um, if you're a en very entrepreneurial spirit, it's probably not the best fit for you. There may be a really niche, small group of people that it may be a good fit for. Like I said, more of that salesy, hand-holding, networking. They want to go take donuts to the, the local company and book all their travel. They want to get their social club together and book a themed cruise for them. Um... It doesn't matter that the website's antiquated because they want to go out and call and shake hands and meet people and go talk over a coffee. They're not worried about scalability. They just want to make um, an income and book travel that they love. So it may be a good fit for that person. So I hope that helps you guys. <coughs> I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comment section below. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, hit the subscribe and notification bell. Um, as usual, you guys, desire to inspire and seek inspiration every day. I'll see you in the next video.